Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in today's video we're going to take a look at a few different ways we could paint the Scare Shields from the upcoming Crawl Boys release. We were very lucky to receive an advanced copy of the new Age of Sigmar Dominion box, and we're going to try and paint up a bunch of stuff from it that hopefully helps you out with painting your own armies. Now the Scare Shields are a pretty significant uh, visual element of the new Crawl Boys models, and I really enjoyed the recent Weimar Community article where they mentioned it was sort of a throwback to the little colour plates that uh, John Blanche used to paint. So when it came to deciding how I wanted to paint them, I had a ton of ideas in my head. So I thought rather than just show you one, I thought I'd show you a bunch of processes that I went through trying out different paints, different techniques, and just have a look at the different effects we could achieve on them. Again, this is for army painting. So we need the processes to be relatively simple, very repeatable, so we can get that army on the table looking awesome in a reasonable amount of time. Now let's get to it. So one of the things in some of the background we've got about the Cruel Boys is that they really like Kragnos. They, they sort of venerate him as this, you know, god of destruction and whatnot. And that a lot of their totems and stuff are meant to be in images of Kragnos. And if we take a look at the model that g -Dub painted for him, the, the heavy metal version, you know, he's got this awesome sort of orange hue to him. So I thought, why don't we try and do a, an orange looking shield? But rather than it being like a flat orange colour, I thought, let's see if we can get a metallic orange. So I'm base coating it using GW Screaming Bell. I absolutely love this paint. And you can see a couple of coats we've got on here now. We've got this beautiful bright orange metal colour. Over the top to add a little bit of contrast, a little bit of definition to it, I've made up a wash out of a couple of contrast paints. I've gone for Flesh Terror's Red and Gore Grunter. I think it's Gore Grunter Fur. 50-50 mix, thinned it with a little water, then just giving a nice liberal wash over the shield. If it pulls in any of the areas, clean your brush off and just wick up any of the excess. And once that's dried, I painted in all the other details black, just to give me an idea of what I need to do, and again to create more de definition and separation between the different parts. For the studs, I guess they are, in the top of the shield, uh, I'm base coating them using decayed metal. Initially, this was what I thought I might do if I painted some Cruel Boys, and we'll have a video on how I end up doing it uh, later next week, probably. Um, but I wanted it to be, whilst I'm wanting the main shield to be quite bright, I wanted the other details to be fairly chill. So I'm highlighting them with uh, Rune Lord Brass. Again, I want the focus of this one to be that, that orange we've achieved on the main shield. Um, so I'm keeping the, the level of contrast between the main shield and the other bits more minimal than on some of the other schemes we're going to have a go at. Now taking an enamel wash. In this case, it's a dark green one and it's called Slimy Grime Dark uh, by Ammo by Mig. And I'm using a little bit of mineral spirits to thin my, uh, thin my paint down with, thin the wash down with. And then I'm doing quite a specific wash here. I'm, I'm placing the wash where I want it. I'm not just washing it all over the model and then removing it, placing it where I want it. Not only to add some more definition and some contrast with the color, but also it's gonna start giving us this horrible swampy look to the, to the miniature. And the idea that they coat these shields in loads of just disgusting grime, uh, which they then wipe off on their weapons to, to poison them. It's pretty cool. Because this is a tester, you just take a little bit longer to decide where you want to put this colour. If you're doing a batch of 10 of them, you do your tester, you know what you're doing, and it'll be even quicker. Now this dries much more matte than it goes on. So that will give us another bit of contrast as well against the metallic finish of the orange metal you can see here. Typically with enamel washes, I leave them overnight to dry. And then a little bit of verdigris, uh, or a little bit of corrosion rather, on the uh, oxidization on the studs and stuff. I'm using a copper oxide oil paint here, which again, it's it's more muted. It's There's less high contrast here. I want it to be on there because I want the shield to have loads of corrosion and decay on it, but I'm not looking to try and create a ton of punchy contrast. And again, I'm going to use mineral spirits to thin this down with. I'm using one of those fairly new GW synthetic brushes. I picked a couple up on release. I've just been testing them out. I use oils and enamels a lot. Uh, it's good to use synthetic brushes with those rather than natural hair because you'll ruin your natural hair ones. I've got to say, it's kept the point better than most of them. Um, so I was fairly impressed. Um, generally, what I do is when my 
natural hair brushes have sort of come to the end of their life for, for proper painting, uh, they tend to get relegated to the oils and enamels pile uh, until they're absolutely ruined. I quite like the original scheme sort of red shields that they've done. Uh, it reminded me a bit of those uh, Hanya masks, I think they're called. Um, that, that sort of lacquered red look. I thought that might be quite cool to try on the shields as well. So we'll go away from this metallic idea and we'll, we'll see what we can do by creating more of a lacquered look. Uh, and for this, I'm going to sponge on a bunch of reds. So over a black primer, I'm starting here with a corn red. And the reason I'm going to sponge is because I want to create a ton of texture on this shield. Um, I enjoy doing that type of thing. I, I find it more interesting to look at. So the next red up, we're going to use uh, Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm sponging on again. You notice I'm using nice big pieces of sponge. I don't want, you know, I want it to be as random as possible. I don't want you to see where perhaps the tweezers have pushed through uh, and formed little sort of circles. Just want nice big sponge, all ripped up so it's tons of random edges. I'm going over the majority of the shield with that to highlight it up. And finally, I'm going to highlight it with Wild Rider Red. I've zoomed in quite a bit here, and hopefully you can see the texture that I'm on about that we've got building up. I just find it really interesting. Um, I think it just gives us a completely different effect that we could achieve than if we were to dry brush stuff or, you know, paint stuff normally or airbrush things or whatever. And then just to bring a bit of punch into the, uh, into the red, I've got some Blood Angels red contrast paint and I've added a couple of drops of red ink into this as well just to really bump up the saturation. I'm just going to wash this all over. Thinned it down with a little water, just giving it one coat. Again, it should just really push that saturation up and hopefully really, you'll notice the finish we get by adding the ink in as well is a little shinier. So I hope it's got that lacquered effect. And then to base coat the studs and things in the top, again, I'm going to use a decayed metal. So just a dark uh, sort of gold, bronze, brown colour. Um, if you haven't got a particularly dark one of these, you can always mix a little bit of brown paint into one of your normal brass or bronze colours. And to highlight it up, I'm going to use Rune Lord Brass again. So this is the same recipe as I used on the uh, copper or orange shield we did. I really, really like how this one's looking. I didn't want to use an airbrush for any of these. And that's partly because across the model, some of the shields are easy to get out like these, but some of them have got quite a lot of other stuff molded onto them, or they're already molded onto the body of the miniature and stuff. So using an airbrush would just be a, a pain really across the army. So I wanted to figure out a nice effect I could get without the airbrush. Uh, and then I'm base coating the metal parts here just in a dark silver. I'm using uh, GW Iron Warriors in this case. But we'll get a nice contrast on this between the non-metallic shield and then the metallic parts we're going to put on it. And here I've just taken some brown oil paint and some orange oil paint. In this case it was burnt umber and burnt sienna. And I'm just going to sort of thin them down with my mineral spirits. Just sort of splotch them all over just to create bit of corrosion, a little bit of rust and stuff. Again, these, these shields are meant to be filthy, they're meant to be pretty disgusting. You see I've got a bit of the, uh, the orange there, the sienna, focusing that more around the silver parts. Just give us a bit of rust. And then once that's dry, I'll do a little bit more of the oxidization on the brass. This time I've gone for a, 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 a much more powerful turquoise color than the oxide, oxide, copper oxide I did before. Uh, this is Turquoise Lights by Absalom 502. It's another oil paint. I'm just gonna wash this over those as well. I just felt like the shield needed a little bit more color on this one. The, the red is so in your face, like you, you, can, you can be pretty brave with all the other colors that you put on there. It's, it's not gonna overpower it or anything. And then once it's all dried, and I did this on the orange shield as well, I'm just going to go back over some of the metal parts and just add a little bit. So in this case, a lighter silver, uh, and I'll do the same on the studs, uh, say with uh, Rune Lord Brass or whatever. The oil paints and enamels, they really, really mat down the finish. So if we want to bring back a little bit of that reflection to the metals, you can always go back in afterwards and use a little acrylics. As someone asked in a recent video, can you paint over the top of the oils? Absolutely, you don't. Once they're dried off, 
and everything is it's absolutely fine. This is acrylic over top of oils. I'm not using varnish for, for any of these processes. And then I'd been reading uh, the really old orc book, uh, Here We Go. And it got me thinking about death skulls and a whole other rabbit hole. And then I thought it might be quite fun to try one of these shields uh, in blue. So I've taken uh, metal color series steel, so a dark silver color. Uh, and I'm just base coating the shield with this. It's predominantly designed for airbrushing this paint, so it's, it's very thin. So if you're going to use it on a palette, use it on a plastic palette, not a wet palette, or it will separate out. But you can see how easily it flows off the brush onto the model. And then we're going to highlight that up by dry brushing it with a really bright silver. In this case, Vallejo uh, Model Air Steel. Any bright silver will do the job. I love the faces on these shields. Like, it's, it's, a, um, it's a very... If you've been in the hobby a long time, there's quite a lot of nostalgia there with those John Blanche type drawings, and it's just really cool to see them uh, brought onto the models. And now over the top, I'm gonna to use Talisar Blue contrast paint. So this will give us a metallic blue effect on the model. Again, I'm taking my time. I'm not just slopping it all, all on in one go. A couple of coats. If there's any excess there, I clean the brush off, then I wipe off anything that's pooling a lot. So we've blacked out the details. Again, the studs, I'm gonna base coat them in decayed metal, so a dark brown, but I will be using a different color now to highlight them up with. I figured on this shield, we sort of turn everything up to 11 with the colors and the contrast. And you can see already how different that decayed metal looks uh, on against that blue than it did on the other two colors. The teeth, initially I thought, well, I'll do them a different color. So I did them a silver, blocked them out with Iron Warriors here. As it turns out later on, um, we just go back to the copper, keep it, keep it a bit more simple. Fewer steps means we're getting the army painted quicker, right? And uh, it was one of those things of, was the impact worth the extra effort to do it? And I didn't feel it was. To highlight the copper up, I'm gonna use a Screaming Bell. And not just because it was on the desk, again, because I really, really like this colour. It's it's so vibrant. Um, and that orange, that strong orange against the blue, you can already see it's a much more high contrast looking shield than we've got on the other two. And then on his tongue, I'm just stippling on the highlights. I want to leave some of that darker uh, bronze colour in the shadows. Now for the corrosion on this, I'm going to use a Griffhound Orange Contrast. I was just playing around really here. You, you know, I use oils, enamels and acrylics um, on, on nearly every project I do. And whilst you can get similar effects with them, they're all ever so slightly different, but it's always fun to try and achieve similar effects using different products. You know, which ones do you enjoy using more uh, and, and which less and in which sort of circumstances? So one of the things with contrast paint is it's, it stays where I put it more. You know, it's, it's, unless I really, really wash it down. But because it's quite a saturated, or generally they're all quite saturated, it does still leave that colour there. And it doesn't have such a matte finish to it that the oil and the enamels do. As you can see here when it's dried. So we've just got a little bit of sort of a rust colour in those uh, shadows. Now I'm going to do the same with the copper parts. And I'm using turquoise, uh, pteridon turquoise, this one's called. And just like with oils and enamels, if you get too much on there, with contrast paints, as long as you're fairly quick, a little wet brush, we can just wipe the excess off there. So we're just leaving it in the recesses. You see I went over the teeth with the orange there and it just it just made them look copper anyway. So I was like, oh well, wasn't any point doing them silver. And then lastly, to bring that shine back, here I'm using a really fabulous paint called Copper by a brand called Dark Star. It's a small British paint company. I'd really recommend searching them out if you can. Their, their metallics are really high flake, really, really thick paint. Um, so if you want that super metallic look, um, they're really, really good. As you can see, we're just picking a few little areas back out just to bring that shine back out. Here they are finished together. Now, I don't actually think I'm going to use any of these three uh, in my final uh, go at painting up one of the cruel boys. I'm actually quite tempted to have a go see if I can make a green one um, Maybe similar to how I went about doing the blue. I think it might look quite cool So I'm gonna have a play around with that 
over the weekend. But I hope you enjoy just taking a look at the process of, you know, approaching painting a new army or even approaching painting one of these videos for you or trying out these different techniques, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. You know, it's a good opportunity to test out new products on a small piece. You haven't got to dedicate, you know, time to an entire miniature. But also, these shields are such a focal point of those miniatures. We need to get them right. Um, and getting the shield right is going to influence perhaps how I paint the entire rest of that model. So that's what I wanted to look at in this video. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you like any of them in particular, or if you think other colours would work. I'll be back soon with another painting video to do with Dominion. So in the meantime, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not, hit that notifications bell so you know when the next video is up. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.